I know, but when he's going, what, what, as well, it's hard, isn't it? The phantom weight in the uh, 54 kilogram weight division for the Moscow Dynamo. It is uh, out of the red corner, as will all of the Moscow fighters, is uh, Vladimir Nikitin. Just 22 years of age, the young... Vincenzo Picardi! The lad getting into the ring first is uh, Vincenzo Picardi, orthodox boxer for the Milan team. Some uh, six years experience on uh, the uh, young Russian boxer at 22. Six years older and for Picardi, not only Harvey, is he got more experience, he's a slightly taller, longer reach oh, boxer. Yeah, I think it matters in a lot of ways there, Nick. You know, he's five centimetres taller, that would apply to the reach. He's, he's got more experience coming up through the amateurs. The, both boys are thoroughbred, you know, and you can't be experienced in this game. It may have an effect. I, let's see how it goes. The Dynamo Moscow, he's 22 years old and in his first WSB season, but good records with three wins in four bouts. Please welcome Vladimir Nikitin. Now, right, Vladimir Nikitin, young lad. He's not the favourite, he's the one with the work to do, Harvey. But his WSB record, 3-1, to one, is pretty impressive this season. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's been involved, you know, he's doing well. Um, I do think he's up against it with Bacardi, to be quite honest. But, um, you know, it is the final and anything can happen on the night. Both boys are going to come out and give it their aid game. You know, anything can happen. Well... Uh, <laughs> We can finally hear ourselves speak in the commentary position here and uh, finally focus uh, on the boxing. Each round will be scored by three judges. You can see there on the big screen. Three judges scoring each of the five and three minute rounds. On both of those fighters, both fighting out of the orthodox stance. That means left hand forward. So 28 years of age, Picardi. One win, no losses, ranked uh, 17. And uh, what's quite interesting with uh, Vincenzo Beccardi is that he's actually qualified to go to the 2012 Summer Olympic Games, but in the flyweight division. So he's about to lose some, a few kilos when he finishes up here tonight as part of his Olympic prep. So the yeah, he's got to lose a few, again. you know. He's got, he's got to lose about Vincenzo two kilos Bacardi just to drop down, you know. He hasn't got to lose too there. much. But it doesn't seem to be a lot on him anyway, so, you know, might be a quite a bit to shift when there's nothing to go. Well, we've seen that before in uh, Summer Olympic history, is that uh, one or two boxers have missed the weight in that all-important way and before the Olympic Games in years gone by, and there's one or two famous British boxers that come to mind in that scenario. Oh, yeah, you know, it was a great shame for us in the last Olympics, you know, we, we really did miss out there, but, um, you know, hopefully... You know, they go on to be great professionals um, and, and, get, and get a better start that way. Dynamo Moscow on the Dolce & Gabbana Milano Thunder. <laughs> Second down, round one. Here we go, first bout. Both orthodox boxers. Some weight division. The first of the five three minute rounds with uh, Vincenzo Picardi up against Nikitin of uh, Moscow. You can see Nikitin there just trying to uh, close the gap down, cut the ring off, and um, put a little bit of pressure on. Try to draw the lead out of Picardi there and then look for the counter. Well, Picardi very keen to show the uh, Moscovite boxer that he's got some quick combinations. And sizing him up. He's feeling him out. He's feeling him out. The, the funny thing I noticed there, Nick, that he's standing actually in a southpaw stance. Yep. And I've got him down listed as an orthodox boxer as well. So um, let's see if he switches back to the orthodox in a second. Now. And he has done. <laughs> playing, they're playing the same game there, just playing out the orthodox stance, looking for the counter. Switching nicely there from Southport to Orthodox. Lovely. Some big shots going in there. Both boys. Oh. 
Good, good pressure there. Good pressure by Bacardi. Closing that ring down. Really making... Yeah, good pressure by Nicotine. Really making Bacardi work there. Really making him work. Be on a nice tight guard. There, Nick Picardi is happy just to sit on the ropes there, you know, soak up a little bit of pressure and, uh, and look for the openings. One, one, two shot counters out of Pacenzo's uh, um, uh, Nicotin's lead there. Well, it looks to me that uh, Vladimir Nicotin has been cut. Looks like a cut to the right eye. Right. Is it the left? Looks, no, that's the left. And that's quite a serious cut, Harvey, to the Russian boxer, the youngster. Yeah, he can take you out of the game, to be honest. Um, you know, suffer a cut quite early. You know, you've got them rounds ahead of you. And um, yeah, I'm sure his focus is on this round, but coming out for the next round, maybe a little bit of a worry for him. Although putting in some good shots now. Uh, and well, there is there is no question that young Nikitin has been the aggressor of the two, but the skills have come from Picardi. Yeah, they certainly have. You know, he's been on the back. He's been on the back foot. He's um, he's using his jab nicely. You know, and Nikitin's trying to pressurise him, trying to pressurise him. Good well, answer, good first round. Very explosive opening round and uh, quite a nasty cut to the eye of Vladimir Nikitin. A lot of work for the corner to do already, Harvey. Yeah, a lot of work for the corner to do straight away. You don't need that at the end of the first round, um, certainly. But the boxer doesn't seem to be too distressed. And he's got a lot of faith in his corner. So um, I'm quite certain they come out focused and ready for the next round. Nicotin going at Bacardi in the early round, but Bacardi showing real speed, great work with his combinations, scoring on that round. Yeah, he's, he's boxing off the back foot, you know. He's soaking up the pressure. He knows Nicotin's trying to cut the ring off and put him under pressure. But um, he just keeps feeding out that lead, feeding out the lead. And he's switching from orthodox to southpaw, Nick, as well, which is going to confuse, confuse Nicotin as well, you know. So switching and, and soaking up the pressure, looking for a quick counter. Well, second round. Same tactic for Nicotin. He's prepared to try and cut the ring out, cut the angles down. And Picardi seems happy to counter and use his speed and use his footwork which has been impressive in the first round yeah he, he seems to be sitting in the corner a little bit more now but um you know both guys for me are just loading up a little bit on the shots i like to see him relax just a little bit more into uh into the bout and then uh, like he's just done there you know nicotine work the body a little bit a nice left to the body which always works well against the southpaw um out of a nice tight guard and then maybe bring a counter up to the top well, referee Jim Gallagher is watching this very carefully. That cut has already been opened from uh, Nicotin. Yeah, another nice shot there downstairs. Um, and uh, let's not forget that uh, Picardi, boxing as a professional here tonight, took a bronze medal at the Beijing Olympics in 2008, and I think that experience is helping him a lot, helping him out a lot now. It is, it is helping, him, it is helping him a lot, but Nicotin for me is um, is putting the pressure on. You know, the, the, the cut Nick doesn't seem to have affected him. You know, he's really making Bacardi work. Um, you know, for me, he's boxing nicely in this round, very nicely. If he could keep it tight, he's obviously the cut's not affecting him. You know, he's putting the pressure on. Lovely miss there, rolling under the shots, perfect boxing. So I like to see him step round a little bit as well now. Now he's got the guy up against the ropes. He's got Picard against the ropes. For me, he should step the right foot round, try and bring the left hand up through the centre. You know, it's always good to change the angle when you're up close. It nullifies one of the arms that the other boxer's got. And, and obviously, you know, cuts down the attack that can come to you.
to the rest having a little look there. He's having another little look at the cut. He's um he's called the doctor over. Um, it does look quite bad. Blood does do that, but it's right on the eyelid. It's, it's not actually on the eyebrow. It's on the eyelid. You know, and that could. It's obviously a, a big decision there, Nick, for the doctor because it's on the eyelid and not on the eyebrow. But um, you know, and Nicotine knows this now. He's trying to put the pressure on. He's thinking, look, I don't want to get stopped. I've got to put the pressure on. Try and see if I can get myself a count. Well, obviously the thing is with Nick, with pressure comes mistakes, you know. Yeah. And he's putting the pressure on and he's loading up on the shots. Yeah, if he keeps his chin up in the air, he's going to get caught with one shot counter. It can turn the fight around for him. Picardi seems comfortable to sit there. Although both guys have put a great amount of effort into these first two rounds and they're looking like they both want to go back and sit down for the, <laughs> to come out for the third, really. There, you go. there is the break. bell for the end of the second round. Possibly a sense of urgency from Nisikin and uh, Bacardi looking very confident. Take a look at some of the shots from the first round. We're looking to see where that cut was taken here. Oh, and I think it was there, Nick. Just a tiny little cut. There you go. It's a little clash of the heads there. And there, put the glove straight up. You know, Nicotine felt it. He felt it. But, you know, it's always it's always dangerous like that, you know, when you're coming in close and you're fighting what we call in the pocket. You know, you're looking for soaking up the pressure and, and working with the body. You know, the heads do come together. You see it a lot. And it's unfortunate. He just pulled it there just under the eye. But it seems to be holding up well in the corner, men are doing a fantastic job. So, you know, he should come out strong for this round. Seconds out, round three. So, a third round. Picardi in the gold shorts for Milan. White and blue for the Dynamo Moscow boxer, Vladimir Nikitin. Yeah, he's standing, uh, standing in an orthodox stance as well now, Nick. You know, um, perhaps the corner have told him. And there, as I say that, he switches back to Southpaw. You know, sometimes the corner offer a bit of advice to say, you know, just stay in one stance, not mix it up too much, and then, you know, work the tactics from that angle. The thing is, Picardi can't keep it long. Every time he tries to move away, Nicotin's on him. You know, what we say, put your head on his chest. You know, so he's cutting the ring off nicely. Um, and uh, in just closing down the pressure, Nicotin feels more comfortable bringing the shots up the middle and uh, bringing them around the side. They're doing it out of a nice tight guard. I think he's boxing very well. Another, another warning from the referee there saying keep your head up. I think he knows that himself now. Yeah. He's got one eye cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and of course the country position here is, is, is right on the side of the Italian coaches and the Italian corner. And uh, the screams to keep uh, Picardi to keep his head out of trouble now are uh, so fervent. I mean, Nicotin's doing a lovely job, you know, that's a fantastic combination. When you get up close, Nick, the first thing you want to do is work the body first. You know, they say two down, two up. You know, and maybe two through the middle. And he's done that exactly. He's brought them around the sides. You know, brought his elbows down, and that gives space for the room, for the hooks up top. He's brought his hands up to the sides of his head, and then he's and then he's fed two shots straight down the middle. Just you know, it's intelligent boxing. Just caution for that uh, pushing down from referee Gallagher there. But uh, there is no question that uh, the youngster Vladimir Nikitin, if he can get those combinations working, you never know. He might turn this one around. Boxing lovely. I mean, both guys have set their stall out. They know exactly what they want out of the fight. Nicotin, his fight is an up close fight. He wants to just shut the fight down. And Bacardi, I'm quite sure if he could keep him on that southpaw start to keep popping out that right jab, he'd love that. But you know, Nicotin is he's drawing the energy out of Bacardi because he's just shutting him down every single time. Um, guys that like to box at range like to stay at range. Yeah. The guys that can't, they like to get up close. So it's a, it is a real good matchup. You know, both guys have given it a fantastic effort over the last three rounds. There's that same tactic from Nicotin. 
two or three to the body, then two or three upstairs, and he's not stopped. If not anything, stopped. I think uh, Picardy is looking at the more tired of the two as we right. reach the end of the third. Spot on, Nick. You know, read my thoughts there, really. I thought Nikitic brought back to corner pressure. Well, look at some of these combination punches from uh, Nikitin, but uh, wonderful counters as well from both boxers. It's a final, there's no question. These are two of the finest phantom weights of the WSB. But there, clearly, that's pushing him down. Yeah, he just, put, he, he just pulled his head down. You know, he, he put a lot of pressure on when he had him up against the ropes there. And then Cardi tried to make a break for it, really, and push him forward. And then, and then the first, I think maybe the hook went around the back of the head there, and, you know, just followed through, pulled him to the floor. It was unintentional, really. Seconds out, round four. An ultimate round. And at one point we thought uh, Picardi may have this one done and dusted in the second. But uh, Nikitin is showing some real strength and power. He certainly is. A little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, grease or something on the gloves there, maybe. Just wanted them cleaned up there before the action presumes. Same tactics again. You know, Nikitin for me is looking nice and strong. The thing is, it's how the judges score it um, and what catches the eye. Picardi is sitting tight in the guard you know, with his arms up nice and tight. He's not letting too many of them shots get through. And if he can get two or three shots off on the counter, then it could be the ones that are picking up the points. Nikitin is definitely looking the more aggressive of the boxers. For me. Uh, they're more aggressive and maybe just uh, a little more left in the tank in this penultimate round. Firing eight punch combinations, first of all downstairs, then upstairs. And of course, a lot of pressure, Harvey, on both of these boxes just to get the first point on the board for the team in the first bout of the fight. Yeah, very important to get a good start, you know, um, and good for the morale as well, really, Nick. I was just thinking there was looking at Picardi, you know, he sort of he bailed out to his right hand side, down the ropes, and Nicotine catching him with that left hook every time. For me, I'd like to see Picardi maybe just shimmy to the right and then bring the left under into the body or maybe over the top. You know, from a southpaw stance, the left hand is an absolute wand. Um, you can't see it coming, and when it lands, it has a massive effect. Well, once again, uh, Nikitin has uh, got the Milan boxer into the corner where he's wanted him throughout this bout. Referee Gallagher. A little wild there. Mm. Unlucky not to connect, possibly. It's, it seems a bit tit for tat at the moment, Nick. You know, both guys are breathing up, you know, sucking it up and, and getting that oxygen in there and having a little burst themselves. Nice bit of work there for the party. Lovely right hand up the centre. You see, he's bringing that left hand every time to the head. I like to see him bring it up the middle or maybe drop it down to the body. I think it might have a little bit of effect. There you go. He tried it that time, but caught on the elbow. Both boys are really having to dig deep now. Screams from the Italian corner, a pivot round, move. Don't let him force you into that corner. And uh, Picardi. Yeah, well, Picardi for me there. You know, I was just going to say he could try and turn him with the right hand, but then he should step back in with a counter, you know. Get two shots off while, while Nicotine's coming at you. Respira, respira. Respira, dammi quello. Respira. Well, uh, clearly uh, Picardi, we just got that quick shot of him sitting in the corner, starting to feel the heat here because uh, Nikitin has been a relentless and if nothing else that cut has fired him up even more, certainly clearly the most aggressive of the two boxers. 
And uh, doesn't seem to be running out of steam in any shape or form no, in this race. You know, for me, one of the things that we learn is, you know, the hardest person to box is someone who's got nothing to lose. You know, that's probably why a lot of kids come up from poverty, make fantastic boxes all over the world. And, you know, when you get cut so early on, and you, you think you could get stopped any second now, you've got nothing to lose. And he's, he's applied the right tactic and just gone for it. And I think it's paid off for him, to be honest. Fifth and final round in the first of the five bouts here at the WSB a team final. Milan oh, Thunder no. going up against uh, Dynamo Moscow. Lovely shot. That was more of a slip than a punch, to be quite honest, Nick. And the referee absolutely agrees with you there, Harvey. Wants the boxers to get right back to it. Nikitin looking for that big hook. An over the top punch. I'd like to see Picardi just step outside, step, step outside the lead foot there. Um, if he could do that, I think what he's calling shouting for is to, to throw the right hook and turn the guy, and like he's just tried, and, and to step back in maybe with a left right counter. You know, so, sometimes with this tactic, where you've got the head on the chest, uh, for me, Nicotin could just take a half step back and maybe send two straight shots straight down there, maybe the backhand and then bring the hook off it. It gives you a little bit more, more room sometimes when the fight is so tucked in. I can see there Nicotine's corner just asked him to bring the uppercut up, to bring the shots up the middle rather than bring them around the body now. Try and push the head up, maybe with the left hand and then bring the overhand right over the top. Well, Picardi. Putting in some good shots in the closing stages here. Just past the halfway point of this fifth and final. The nicotine there is it? It's, oh, there's, a, there's a left body screaming out. Uh, you know, left body shot screaming out there. I'm looking for that shot for the last 25 seconds now. Lovely shot. And there for the first time there, Nick, he's just turned in, yep. you know, in the last round <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, and could have stepped back in with the counter. Which is what the corner have been screaming for for the past three. Uh, I think Picardi's just trying to bring that left hand up the centre rather than, you know, there's no room for the hook there. He's still trying to fire the same shot. He should bring the left hand up the centre. Just below 20 seconds. Both guys just grinding it out now. Really are, and that is it out of that is the descriptive. Oh, grinding it out. What is left is being put. Oh, great one-two from Bicardi there. Two cuts immediate. There, there. Two cuts as well for Nicotin. And there it is. Fantastic effort. What a fantastic opening bout here at the XL Arena. So, ladies and gentlemen, what an explosive! Five round opening bout between Vincenzo Bicardi and Vladimir Nikitin. We will get the results to you as quickly as we can. Well, just as we thought that uh, the uh, Moscow boxer Harvey had uh, lost his chances through that clash of heads so early on in the bout, it seemed to give him a passion that has kept him in the fight and made this an incredibly close decision in it's the first a, It's bag. a close decision. It's, all, it's always a tough one to call. Um, if I put my hand on my heart, I'd say that um, for me, uh, Nicotin won that, you know, through, through sheer pressure. If it was scoring the rounds out of aggression, then he, he, he put a lot more pressure on for me and um, um, made it, maybe made it the fight than it was. So referees, We'll could bring the way, fighters though. together. We do have a uh, decision here from the for. judges. Judge number one has scored the bout 48 to 47. Judge number two has scored the bout 47 to 48. 
Judge number three has scored about 47 to 48. It is a split decision in favour of the winner from Team Dolce and Gabbana Milano Thunder, Piccardi oh, Vincenzo. Well, there you have it. Vincenzo Piccardi takes the first point of the evening in the bantamweight division. So close. We expected it to be close. Split decision. But Harvey Picardi just gets it. Just gets it. You know, it was a fantastic bout. Um, for me, it could have gone either way. I, I favour Nicotine in that one. I, I like that. I like a come forward fight that cuts the ring down, puts more pressure on. Could have gone either way. But the, the Italian corner over the moon with that win, and it's given a great start. So what a cracking opening well, bout. Look at that Vincenzo story. Picardi. Scores the first win. win. By two to one. Lovely to meet Incredibly you. close, incredibly Thanks tight. What an explosive now. start to this evening's action. A first win but right by the <laughs> excuse me, right by our commentary position here. And it is a the Italian the contingent crowd the managers absolutely the on their feet and delighted. And it was almost as if that the coach Harvey and their their coach Francesco Damiani, who was screaming throughout that fight only started to get that information through to the boxer in that final round when he was finally turning him but and finally making it catch. Yeah, I mean,